the development of Pansori. Korea had uh, with China uh, long cultural ties, and there was trade, official and private trade, during the 17th and 18th century. Pansori developed uh, um, sometime before mid 18th century. The first document about Pansori was written by Yu Jin Han about Chunyanga in 1753. So the trade developed around the time when Pansori developed. And trade, with the trade, the Korean uh, officials and commercials and envoys and attendants visited China and they, I think there was good chance for them to see Chinese narrative song. That's why I'm uh, looking into trade of that particular period. And lots of Chinese stories that Chinese actors and singers are uh, referred in Korean literature, poems, and also in Pansori texts. These are the reasons why I'm looking into whether there was uh, Chinese narrative song's influence to Korean Pansori for its development. Currently, um, Korea doesn't have such a strong cultural tie with China, but up to late Joseon Dynasty, we had a lot of uh, cultural and political ties, which was with the foundation of Joseon Dynasty, the, the founding king, Pejo Isonge, and adopted, as you all know, the Confucianism as ruling philosophy. And we were concentrated more so to China. Before then, there were lots of trade and cultural exchanges uh, from the West. West means, doesn't mean European countries. It does mean beyond China. We call it Soya. So there were music and dances and theaters coming into Silla or United uh, Silla and Korea dynasty. But from from the end of 16th century, we were solely, almost solely focused in China, and we had a lot of a relationship with China, which was, in fact, I think, um, disadvantage to Korea, because we were looking only China for uh, every aspect of our um, life culture, education, philosophy, religion, all of that. So, Joseon kind of narrowed our scope that um, concentrated only on China. To that respect, it is in a way regrettable that Pejo uh, Isonge adopted Confucian as a ruling philosophy. And music-wise, there was, again, Lots of various culture we could have learned or adopted from beyond the China because we were solely concentrated in China. As you all know, for the last part of our history, we adopted the Chinese culture, and China was called the big great country to Korea. I'm going to go through the different per periods that what we have adopted or learned or influenced from China. During the Silla and Uni Unified Silla period, we imported a lot of uh, arts, religion, calligraphy, Hansa, Chinese characters, music, musical instruments, theaters, and dances. As a um, Example, Samguksagi records that uh, people in Silla was won uh, Chinese costumes, officials, and ordinary people. I read Samguksagi uh, about 35 years ago, I think. I remember reading the ordinary Koreans were wearing white clothes. That was written in Samguksagi. And during the United Unified Silla period, a Buddhist chant, Pompe, was introduced uh, from China. To talk a little about Pompe, the 
The vocal style of Pompeii is not the Chinese style. We, are, we learned, we adopted the vocal style of Chi Tibetan monks in Pompeii wise. Although we, adopt, uh, we learned the religion via China. During the Korean period, a Nare ceremony, which was a ceremony to drive out evil spirits, was imported from China. And that was uh, continued into the Joseon period. And it was adapted to common people that people in Pongji, in Sol, um, Lunar solstice, winter solstice day, people made um, porridge out of crushed red bean, and before they eating it, or after eating it, usually before eating it, um, late housewife uh, throw that patju, pongji patju, red bean paste around the house, that meant to prevent evil spirits coming into your place. And Goryeo Dynasty saw the importation of Tang, Tang Ak, which is music from Tang Dynasty, and the Song Dynasty, popular music of Song Dynasty, was called the Song Sa Ak. Sa means popular or ordinary or vulgar. Ak means music. In 1115, so 1114 and 1116, uh, during the reign of King Yezhong of Korea, musical instruments such as Pianjong, Pianjong in Korean, uh, there is there is bass, which was used uh, in China since prehistoric area, Shang Dynasty. Many musical instruments were imported to, were sent by the Song Pijong to Korea Yezhong, the Korean court. <coughs> and I didn't mention that the Korean civil examination system, Pago, was introduced to Korea during the reign of King Pang Jong. Um, during the Joseon period, Chinese Beijing opera, which was performed at the turn of the 20th century in Seoul, gave the birth of uh, Korean Changguk singing drama. There is a mistake there uh, in the early 20th century. Tango was developed in the early 10th century. Not only music and writing system and clothes were imported and adopted from China, we imported popular theatrical music such as Kokdugakshi and Sandegu. Kokdugakshi is Korean puppet theater play, which you can still watch it in some occasions. Okdugashi is known to have derived from Chinese, Chinese uh, theatre play and Sandegu was developed from Chinese miscellaneous play which is called Jaju. This picture shows um, a Chinese man uh, delivering Story hitting drums himself. It was um, discovered in the tomb in Sichuan area. Where's drum? Pardon, drum, drum is held in his left hand yeah. under his arm and he's holding the stick in his right hand. Korean Tansuri singing, I imagine most of you experienced the performance. Uh, Pansuri is sung accompanied by a, a barrel drum. There is a dedicated drummer. But when Pansuri is sing or practices his or her song, he plays the drum himself or herself. So there is some similarity. 
So this has nothing to do with Khan story, but this is a, a character, Sun Wong, in, in the Chinese play, Journey to the West, CEO G. It's a Ming picture. And we read, I read that when I was a child. And Sang Gyo Ji is also very popular in Korea. And this has nothing to do with Khan story, but I thought the painting tells the um, popularity of a Chinese novel in Korea. Now I'm going to look at the trade link which took place uh, starting from mid 17th century because Khan story developed as I earlier mentioned sometime before mid 18th century. Korea conducted official trade with China in 1646 in Chungang, which, which is located alongside the river Amno, river Yalu, at the border of, between China and Korea. The trade was in the beginning only limited to uh, for the benefits of royal family and government, but with that private uh, trade has developed. And as the uh, trade, the scale of trade went uncontrollable, the South Korean government abolished it in 1700. But there are developed another trade, which he was private trade in 1660 uh, in Yaomen area. But this trade became uncontrollable, uh, controllable again, so government, uh, Korean government abolished it again. And Yao Men is important uh, in in this uh, in this sense because Yao Men was located in North China, close to uh, Beijing, and Chinese storytellers were performing in street markets and in the streets. A Korean historian Han Yeong Wook says that um, the number who was involved in business with China was very great that about a thousand horses took goods four times a year from, to and from China. This sounds like I'm talking a lot about uh, trade, but as I said earlier, it is important because people would have seen Chinese uh, storytellers in street bazaars when they visited China, those envoys, attendants, and interpreters. Tong Mun Kwan Ji records on trade was written by Kim Jin, Kim Jin An and his son Kim Jong Un. It was written around 1700. And the record demonstrates how productive the trade was. Uh, Kim was an interpreter. Um, interpreters uh, was Chung In, and uh, Chung In emerged uh, from a lot of part of Joseon area, and Chung In contributed a lot contributed a lot to popularize Pansori because they promoted Pansori by recommending Pansori singers to royal families and organizing Pansori festivals. That was only 19th century, but Jungin, uh, particularly a particular person whose name was Shin Jae-ho, or some people um, compare him as space in England, that uh, he didn't write novels, but he sophisticated, refined the, China, um, the Chinese words in Pansori uh, literature, Pansori text. <coughs> Tong Wan Wan says, um, originally Yao Men was deserted and out of the way. 
Few people lived and worked there, but after about 10 years of commercial activities, the number of residents increased and the area became a busy town. The streets were full of vehicles with goods whenever the market was open. Some traders from southern part of China came by sea. Their ships arrived in <coughs> Niljuang. William Griffiths um, again uh, mentioned about the trade. trade. Those two 
uh, zones to see whether they have similar characters with the pantry zones. There are hundreds of Chinese storytelling zones in China, and it is difficult to pick certain uh, storytelling zones. I chose those two songs um, based on the trade activity and the um, people who visited uh, in those areas. And again, with the similar characters that uh, Pan Suri and uh, Beijing Drum Song and Yang Zhu Xianzi shares. There are several uh, drum singing called Dagu in Chinese, and they include Beijing Drum Song, Qingwen Dagu, and Shan Shandong Drum Song, Shandong Dagu. I'm looking into Beijing Drum Song. Beijing Dagu is performed in the north and northeast of China in Hebei, Beijing, Tianjin, in these areas. Beijing Dagu is performed in a combination of speech and songs, uh, which is similar to Pansuri. Another, um, uh, there are three um, elements that Pansuri has. There is speech, song, and gesture. And Beijing Dao has gesture, as you will see later. This is not mentioned in this PPT page. And in northern China, as I've already mentioned, there were uh, Beijing, there were heavy trades that uh, there are uh, chances that. Korean um, folk entertain entertainers were aware of the existence of Crazy Dago. Amazing Dago, like Pansuri songs, narrates um, famous tales. So another similar picture with the Pansuri. Uh, we listen to a Dago. The song title is the Pitchy Blossom Village. And this female performer plays a clapper, wooden clapper, and she hits the flat drum too. Um, she's accompanied by a uh, string instrument. Sanxian, Sifu, and Pipa. And you will see the, the, the song she's singing it has um, very uh, rhythmic uh, patterns as Pansuri does.
if a storyteller went far away, why wouldn't he or she come to Korea with a sense of the yellow sea? That is my um, presumption. I didn't find any evidence of it. I'm going to listen uh, one example of uh, Yang Zhu's sketch. She's not singing. And uh, current Pansuri is singing, is performed uh, by, by songs. There is little narration or uh, spoken passages because over the time, over the time, uh, Pansuri developed and uh, narrations were exempted, but originally, uh, there were more spoken passages and narrations in Pansori performance. Here I have a uh, memo, main memo that uh, what teachers are similar between Yang Yu Sensei and Pansori. Performance in both genres employ props uh, such as a handkerchief and a pen. And she was holding a pen, no handkerchief. And Pansori singers always use a pen. Uh, ah, pen, yes. And the spoken passage uh, dominates young youth storytelling. And it was, as I mentioned already, the same case with the Pansori performances. And it exists, it has. Um, developed different uh, schools and styles. Now I'm already um, reaching to my conclusion. Considering there was close cultural context between Korea and China throughout its long history, and commercial activities and trains developed between two countries around the time Pansuri was uh, originated. And the similar, similar, um, performance, similar performance styles of both genres. And the allusion to Chinese actors and singers in Korean literature and in Pansuri texts. And lastly, the Chinese historical and popular novels are consisting part of uh, the whole Pansuri piece. It is possible that uh, Pansuri may have developed under the influence of Chinese narrative tradition. I said here Chinese popular novel uh, consists part of Pansuri piece. 
Uh, one example of is that uh, Pansori Simchonga starts with, with uh, the text starting like this. At the end of Song Dynasty, so that tells the story of China. And uh, Pansori, one of the five normative Pansori pieces currently performed, Chokbyokka, that is Chokbyokka, sings uh, the fight uh, over the Red Cliff, which is a historical uh, war in China. So um, that is what I mentioned in the section five. Now regarding which genre might have influenced for the development of Pansori, to me, uh, it is likely that Yangju Sianse have uh, had greater effect because it was originated at the end of Ming Dynasty, but there was a lot of uh, frequent cultural folk cultural contacts uh, with China, and Pansori was developed uh, sometime during the. Sometime during the 18th century or earlier than that. I I I'm puzzled here myself because there are similar features with um basing drum singing that Pansori has. The vocalization and the use of drum um, is shared by uh, Beijing Tao and uh, Pansori. But uh, seeing the um, two facts, uh, I think it is more likely that uh, Yang Ju uh, had uh, impact gave impact to uh, developed uh, Korean pansori. But again, um, this is my regret that there is no solid evidence. There is another Korean, there are, there are not many Korean uh, scholars that looked into whether the Chinese nationalistic song gave influence to the pansori's development. Um, there is one scholar arguing Beijing drum song singing gave influence to Pansori uh, uh, to develop, and there are some uh, scholars that Korean Pansori, the original Korean pan, original Korean Pansori should be found in within the nation by looking to China, but uh, with the cultural importation that we had so much from China for centuries and the uh, trade took place in northern China and the southeast coast of China I think it is possible that uh, in some way Korean artists folk artists developed had an idea based on viewing or hearing from someone who went to China and developed personally. But this is the end of it. Thank you for listening. Good talk. For the common duty. The drum song is a good one. It's a song about the common duty. Counterpart certainly in China that uh, uh, objects used in a Buddhist um, world are used as a percussion instrument in China. As far as I can remember, there was developed uh, not before the 19th century, it is quite new. Pansori was developed during the 1970s. 
for you. And there was developed uh, a bit earlier, but not more than, let's say, 100 years ago. There is a counterpart in China. Uh, sorry that I can't remember. Uh, mm. I'll tell you later. Sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> but there is a counterpart to Samuel in China. is the intense training regimen the singers go through, uh, how they go up to the mountain for 100 days. Is there any any similarity in these training shadows with how the singers train? Um, yes, certainly. Beijing opera, singers in Beijing opera, opera they start to be trained since from age of 7 or 8, the boys and the young ones. If you watch the film, pay over to my concubine, the uh, young children would uh, get out of their bed uh, very early in the morning and they train physically and vocally. So there is similarity between Beijing, Beijing Opera, the, the training, Beijing Opera and Pansuri singers. And Pansuri, uh, there aren't many Pansuri singers nowadays who go through 100 days in mountain or uh, next to river or in some case next to someone's graveyard. I heard um, the master, master Pansuri singer An Shuk-sung or the late Park Dong-jin practiced their songs uh, as soon as they um, start their work every morning for one or two hours for uh, for a year, one year for two years, but that's different from 100 days study or even a thousand days study. In the 19th century, up to mid 19th century, there were singers who studied the Chonil Gong, which is a thousand days study. But nowadays, Pansori singers do not go through such hard training.
so there is of course after uh, 1886 sometime that USA um, invented the long play records. These Pansori singers recorded mostly in Japan. They went over Japan to record their songs live. And you can find those records in Kyobohungo record shop or in other record shops. And these records, are, uh, the quality of these records are not very good uh, because the um, recording system was not very sophisticated in those days. But you can still find uh, records done uh, at the beginning of 20th century. And there is the earliest uh, uh, listening material that you can find. Uh, the singing technique and performance style has changed, uh, not significantly, but has, uh, has changed. And, um, for instance, during the early 20th century, uh, Pansori songs were sung like Gyeonggi Minyo or Sodosori, folk songs sung in Gyeonggi province or current northwest part of from North Korea. And some Pansori singers even sang accompanied by a Jango. Normally Pansori singer, Pansori uh, performance is accompanied by a barrel drum because the heavy sound of the drum uh, suits to the uh, heavy vocalization of Pansori singers that they sing from abdomen, tanzol. The, the voice comes from low part of your voice. But in the early 20th century, there were not many people who were experts or pansori, there were not many pansori aficionados or connoisseurs in those days. So pansori singers had freedom to sing uh, lightly uh, uh, to suit, the, suit their mood. And they, in a way, ignored the audiences because the audiences didn't have the ability to judge which pansori song is properly sung and which one is it. The last question. <laughs> All right, the very last question. Uh, I got the impression that while maybe the styles have, of singing have changed over the decades, Basically, it's a pretty limited repertoire of songs or operas, if you want to call them that. And I wanted to ask why, if that is true, why is this kind of a staying that way and rather than new works being developed, which probably would allay uh, this gentleman's fears of it being Chinese, it, where if there's more you know, modern Korean themes but using traditional techniques and deliveries, it would be uh, more of a vibrant living and maybe more relevant to younger people. Uh, I wondered what your thoughts may be and if I'm correct in my assessment. There have been attempts to develop new, uh, new Pansori songs um, having completely different title and contents. Uh, in China, there, were, uh, there have been attempts to modernize uh, their um, traditional narrative songs. And the attempts were not very successful. In China, the modernized uh, storytelling song made some, pop, uh, made some appeal to the public. It was uh, kind of temporary and it didn't um, go bang, if you like, and was popular to the whole uh, Chinese population. In Korea, um, the history of uh, Yu Guan Sun, uh, who was one of the figures uh, in the March 1st independent movement, the story of herself was sung in Pansori uh, and um, the story of uh, Christ mm. was sung as Pansori and Kim Ji-ha who is a kind of 
revolutionary poet uh, created Pansori, uh, one of the titles he made, one of the songs he made is five thieves. Five, uh, five thieves. Five uh, thieves. Yes. And but that was uh, popular amongst certain uh, individuals. It didn't go to make good appeal to the whole Koreans or whole population. So there has been attempts. 